I think Ooh. that means it's actually Get live. Nerds, nerds! <laughs> well, there it is, everyone. We don't know if you saw our bumper at the beginning or not, because it's always a little rough when we go live. Welcome to a brand new Wednesday edition of the Bid Nerds, uh, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer and Hemmings and P-Car Market and Rad for Sale and whoever else decides to have an auction site today. My name is John Polk. I'm coming to you live from the Las Vegas Strip, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, coming to you from San Francisco. Good morning, Michael Deeb. How are you? Good morning, JP. Yeah, you know, uh, we're doing this whole show thing. It's live. Uh, we've been noticing some weird live stuff. We'll get some business out of the way. If you've been watching the show and you watch it live, thank you. We appreciate you. And thanks for subscribing, oh, yeah. liking, and sharing the show. Uh, if you're trying God, to catch God it afterwards, you. yeah, right. Um, <laughs> we're noticing that sometimes there's a little latency before YouTube publishes it after the stream has ended. We're working on that. So we uh, we apologize if some of the content is a little old by the time you're looking for it because you're going, <laughs> I want to look at the cars today. What's going on? So anyways, uh, this is, like I said, this is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all these auction sites. And uh, we pick uh, we pick our top five picks of the day. Uh, we make predictions as to what these cars will sell for. And we keep track of those numbers. Uh, yeah. And we talk about those numbers from the day before. Right? What's up about yesterday? Huh? Yeah, cousin Mark uh, noticed that latency and he was freaking out. I was like, calm down, calm down. You know, just hit subscribe there, little cousin. and you'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, cousin Mark anyway. needs to uh, get on the interwebs. Yeah, he needs to join this century. Yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah. he's still watching us on dial-up, I think. Yeah, <clears throat> AOL account is strong. That's okay, I still have a Hotmail account. Um, they want me to pay. I don't know. Microsoft, I think, is like going, forget this. They just don't like having to deal with uh, Hotmail. Now it's like, oh, well, if you want storage, you have to pay a bunch of money. I'm like... They want me to pay for Hotmail. That might be the death mail nail for it. I, I, I don't think I they're know. trying to hang on to it. I think they want to get rid of it. That's um, a shame. That's a shame. Yeah, man. Uh, yesterday's cars, we had some pretty interesting cars. Let's talk about those. Uh, yeah. we had an interesting day of bidding, a lot of parody as per usual. Um, right. So was, let's, yes, yeah. yesterday was a very even day and, and it's interesting too, JP. We started, let's start off with our, uh, start car was 1680 for Land Rover Defender, uh, 110 high cap, and this car was on Hemmings, uh, which is our first coverage of Hemmings auction site, and it's yeah. interesting. And uh, and the viewers should take note um, because what you see on that Hemmings site is exactly what you're going to see on bid for sale, uh, or sorry, um, rad for sale when they launch uh, in just a couple days coming up, uh, because they're using their platform. But this turned out. You to mean be you mean really their nice... their interface, the, the user yeah, interface yeah. is exactly what we're using. You're not going to see oh, the same cars. <laughs> to yeah, be that's clear. for sure. <laughs> <clears throat> absolutely, yeah. It's going to be. Uh, they they bought their their software to to run the auction site, so it'll be very interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me, JP. So this car has been redone, and John, you and I were definitely way off, uh, yeah. or you and I are right on, and the owner of this car is way off, and it, I, I don't know them well enough to discern the difference, so maybe you can help me out, because I thought this car uh, looked like it would bring thirty grand. You bet the over and said thirty five. Uh, the car was bid to $44,000, but did not sell there, and remained available on Hemming's site for $57,200, which in of itself is a really weird asking price. What's with the 200 bucks? I don't get it. But uh, anyway, you won that one, but that car, they're looking for 60 grand for that car. That's twice as much as what you and I thought that was going to bring. So what, where, what are we missing here? Well, okay. So, I mean, you know, my, when, when we do these bids, a lot of times people say, wow, your bid was really off. That car is worth this, or that car is worth that. You know, when, yeah. when I have these discussions offline with other people, the thing is what we're often doing isn't necessarily bidding what the car is worth, but bidding what the platform is telling us. Uh, yeah. and Hemmings being kind of a newcomer, uh, to this world, even though they're one of the biggest auction houses and been around, I mean, they are auction car auctions, right? They're a little late in the late to the game with this whole, online thing with BAT yeah. and uh, P car market and cars and bids already there well ahead of them. So, you know, looking at how many bids there were prior to us, uh, you know, uh, prior to the hammer ending, we're kind of looking at that going, all right, there's only a couple hours to go. It's sitting at, 20 something. So for right. it to double in two hours is pretty unlikely, even though, I'm, you know, and I thought I said it too. I, you know, the car is worth more. I mean, it's definitely worth somewhere in that fort where it was bid to was actually pretty decent money. This guy trying yeah. to get 50 or 60 for it. 
I don't know. It's crazy. You're, you're, yeah. I hope you like this truck because you're keeping it. I mean, you know, the yeah. the North American market ones bring the mud. Um, but not right. these. Yeah, the NAs. These. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I mean, great yeah. utility vehicle, but it's, you're, you're, it's a really niche market that he's trying to sell this car to and for all the money. So it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's really interesting. Uh, so uh, listen, even 44 on Hemmings is an impressive run yeah. for that yeah. car. It was at 28 when we reviewed it. Yeah. Just to go. Uh, but 57 does seem like, listen, like in any case, you won that one and uh, not done. Let's. Well, hold on. Any so, other words? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I think the other thing about the high, you know the Hilux, the, look, this whole pickup truck thing. Americans love pickup trucks, but yeah. what we're seeing over and over again is American loves America loves Japanese and American pickup trucks. They want an F one fifty or they want a Toyota pickup. They pretty much don't want anything else yeah. in a pickup. Jeep Wrangler did a made a huge yeah, uh, gamble on their Gladiator, making that a, into a truck. And I I was one of the people that oh my god they're going to print money with that thing. And it's been a yeah. ab- failure i mean it just has not sold they don't sell they're neat trucks but nobody wants them everybody wants their wrangler uh to have the four doors and they want Mm -hmm. they want it to be an suv they don't want it to be a pickup truck um if there are plenty of other options for pickup trucks uh and you know this would be the coolest thing to to cruise around if you had your uh ducati scrambler in the back or something like that but if you're somebody as a kawasaki or a cr250 honda or something like that and or you're you're you know four wheelers or something they just want to have 150 or a wrap yeah that's true that's true <laughs> so, yeah yeah a lot less yeah for listen for fifty seven thousand dollars you could go buy a brand new completely redone ford f-150 and have an incredible truck i mean that's a, yeah. it's a ton of dough yeah. uh, to put into something here uh is probably dripping oil in your driveway i mean it's just well yeah. yeah i mean you know to this to this car's credit i mean at 40 or 50 grand i think that's fine uh for this car because it's probably not going to depreciate unlike the brand new f-150 it's going to be worth six thousand dollars in 10 years right um um, you know, so this this car is really neat. Don't get me wrong. I do believe this is. You know, I'm I'm knocking it for a bunch of reasons that uh, are relevant to people who don't see the value in something like this. I'm just saying that the market for something like this is very, very, very small. Most people that want a Defender want a Defender or a Defender 110 or a D90. They don't want a pickup yeah. truck. Somebody does. I want this, but it's definitely not high on my list. There's 50 other no. things that happened before this thing is even on the radar. So yeah, a uh, neat ass truck uh, guy. I don't see him ever selling it for 60 grand. Yeah. I do love that color though, by the way, it does look good. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> and beautiful I like that he put the D90 wheels on it too. Yeah. So, right. Some nice, <laughs> nice touches. Yeah. But, uh, but clearly somebody wasn't willing to pay his premium for it. So anyways, yep. all right, let's jump over to P car market JP right. where yesterday you and I accidentally discovered the best like is this could this be like the coolest <laughs> air cooled 911 ever a 77 turbo carrera with a 96 forder motor swap this is a normally aspirated 3.6 liter flat six with a g50 gearbox in my favorite shell the turbo carrera in arguably my favorite color ice green metallic jp this car is so sexy holy hell and all you know High praise to uh, what's those guys over at P Car Market. Um, this car made a great run, and and then judging by the run it was on, I said eighty thousand. You bet over me at eighty one. JP, you and I were both on the money here. This car sold for seventy eight thousand nine hundred thirty bucks, which means I was essentially one hundred seventy dollars away from a Yahtzee, wow. and you were, you know, you were seventeen hundred dollars away from a Yahtzee. But uh, congratulations to P Car Market on that sale. That's that that's a great reflection that. Your audience is growing and that, you know, things are going well enough um, to keep you keep the lights on another week, at least. Um, That's all the money for that car. Yeah, it really is. And, and, you know, we used to say pretty regularly, it's like, okay, whatever it'll bring on P car market, it's going to bring more on BAT. And I think that gap is narrowing uh, rapidly. Yeah. 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 So P car market is doing a good job getting more cars and getting them out there. It's still, the photography is just awful on this. Um, But uh, there's some guy flipping off his computer screen in in a P car markets, corporate offices right now. I told you nerds that you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah, Calm down. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, you know, they're interns in their photography department. Not so good, though. Yeah. Right. yeah. Relax, Bobby. There's pizza in the break room. Go on. That's right. All the Cheerios you want. There's a bucket of peanut butter in there somewhere, too. You can live in the corner on that bean bag. Uh, all oh, right. Man. All right. So then uh, we also looked at a 1982 BMW 320i. This car was pretty rough, but uh, mm. you and I were both impressed with the kid's effort to get some <laughs> assets for this car with the photography and uh, using the drone and in car. And uh, just to put yourself in front of the camera and narrate, uh, it's not as easy as it looks. Believe me, I've tried for fascination and that has not gone well. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, you ran a, you did a commercial for God the other day and you were, I remember you telling me candidly how impressed you were that the saleswoman who works for God turned yeah. out to be very comfortable in front of the camera and could literally deliver her lines well. Yeah, and yeah. That, that that was that's no easy feat. And so just the fact that this guy put himself out there, you and I were both impressed. Um, I'm not sure that the audience on Cars and Bids were. I thought that car might bring 6,500. You said 5,500. And yeah, you know, I don't know. You got it right. <laughs> Yahtzee. Well, I got a Yahtzee. Nailed Hot it. damn. If, I, if anybody it. knows garbage, it's me. Uh, this poor <laughs> car was kind of a piece of junk. And this, it just proves you can't put lipstick uh, on a pig and sell it as a supermodel. Um, you know, it, it was. did his photos bring more money? Yeah. I mean, Amen. I think they did. I mean, this car brought, what, 5500 yeah. Um, You know, this is a $2,500 car on a good day. That's so right. I, I, I think yeah. you could say that it do- he doubled his money. Um, Absolutely. You know, we put we put lipstick on our LeBron, uh, our famous <laughs> Le- 1988 LeBaron, and we made that look as good as it could possibly look. But at the end, of, but when you really factor it in, it did it was a nice car. Our LeBaron yeah. was a nice car. It was just fundamentally kind of a crappy car, uh, <laughs> but in very good condition. This is fundamentally yeah. a decent car in poor condition, and they made right. it look as good as possible. Again, great job, kid. I'm glad you made yeah. the video. I, I hope you're sure. happy with what you got for it. Yeah, yeah, And again, this car's got a bunch of miles on it, and it needed everything. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, kind of a neat little car. Footnote yeah. history, certainly. It, it's yeah. sort of the the grandfather of all the small performance BMWs. Uh, also on Cars and Bids, JP, mm. I abandoned you on air. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe you took me back. A 2004 Mercedes-Benz uh, 320 SLK. Uh, at the time that we ran to, uh, to uh, review this car, I gave you the stats and then had to let my dog out to pee because I thought he was going to have an accident. And then you carried the day. But uh, anyway, I thought the car would bring 6500 You said 6300 this car made a nice run, and it brought seven thousand nine hundred and one dollars, and sold at that price. So I managed to squeak that one out, despite not being present for. Maybe that's my new strategy: is just I just walk away, not be here at all. Yeah, good plan at yeah. all. Yeah, good plan. Okay, and then uh, we finished it up with some uh, Italian dessert, nineteen seventy three Alfa Romeo GTV with the bumpers off and a roll cage. Uh, by all accounts, this is an aggressive sort of almost track focused car. Listen, you could drive this on the street. But even an in-car video on smooth boulevard roads, this guy is bumping around. I think it's probably a little too stiff or really a track-focused vehicle. It looks like a GTA, but it's got a two-liter motor. It's probably a hoot to drive. Um, And he did really well. I said $70,000. You took the under at 68, which is all the money in the world for this car. But man, uh, you know, he's got some studio shots. He put really cool pieces. He Legoed this car together with all the correct bits and uh and this car brought seventy seven thousand five hundred dollars uh so anyways jp i got three wins but you got two wins in a yahtzee that's a that's as even as it gets really yeah yeah uh what a beautiful car man i i i say i think i said yes on yesterday's episodes one of these is going to be in my future but the with the prices going where they are and i'm i I guess not i mean Mm. uh this they're just too expensive for for my uh for my blood i think i'm stuck with old beater 911s yeah, the, the inexpensive ones, the project cars are bringing twenty five to thirty five grand. The nice ones bring forty and up. Mm. All the money is over fifty and sixty. And when you see something bring seventy seven thousand dollars, that's more than Peter George got for his. That's uh, you know th- these are going to be hundred. The nice ones are going to be hundred thousand dollar cars uh, here in the next uh, 
the next run of the market, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, look, I, I, if you have something like that and you're in Las Vegas, if you have an old air cooled car, if you have an old European car, bring it to cars and cafe this Sunday. The last Sunday of und. every month is cars und cafe, not cars und. and coffee cars und cafe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we are in the arts district of Las Vegas. It's like a little mini loof to cult every, <laughs> every month. And uh, we just have a great time. So uh, if you're in the area, come on out and, uh, and enjoy uh, a yeah. cup of coffee and friends and great cars and the good wolf uh, lifestyle co they they well, carry all kinds of great stuff like this. Co- come to cars and cafe and, and we'll give you an umlock yeah uh, i don't even know what that is but i'm gonna say uh, those are the okay. two dots over yeah, a letter in the on the loop european yeah like, yeah <laughs> oh man all right uh well that's so that was yesterday's cars those were our predictions it's time for our predictions for today's cars we've got five great magnificent automobiles i think we're gonna start <laughs> with p car market today we've got a great 993 who doesn't Ooh. love a 993 come on man look at this car jp Holy this is the car dollars. you need do you need this car in your garage and then you'll have the coupe and the cab this is yeah. right right down your alley uh this is a just a no-nonsense c2 coupe uh it's a a vario ram car as jp astute told me uh taught me about four years ago that the 96 97s and 98s differ from the 95s because they have two oxygen sensors and a uh, different intake runner. Um, These cars uh, tend to make a little more power, but can sometimes be a bit more problematic. But when you find a nice one, it's absolutely worth all the trouble. Look how pretty this car is sitting on the 18 inch turbo twist wheels. Clearly that car has been lowered on its suspension. Um, He's got a couple of decals, which always makes me happy. This car also has motor sound package, um, which is the sort of a, a little bit louder exhaust from the factory. Um, and I'm okay with the Metropole blue interior. I don't know if you how you feel about that, JP. I know you did Porsche road trip in a 996 uh, C4S that had that blue interior. How did you feel about it? Would, would you buy a car like this? Would you spend your money on that? Or only when they're paying you to do it? Metro blue on silver is fantastic. I think it's a great color. Right. Would I prefer black? Of course. But I'll take Metro blue all day long over something like a light you know, bisque or a brown or even a red or any of that kind of stuff. I mean, the Metro blue really kind of does look black. Uh, And, uh, and yeah, I've kind of grown to love it. So um, yes, I would absolutely rock that color and dig it. Yeah. So this car JP is offered to us out of Miami, Florida with 70,000 miles. Uh, It's sitting at about $46,000, but still with two hours to go. There's only seven bids, but uh, we see that uh, with, with PCAR market, sometimes it's not quantity, it's quality. Mm. And um, I would expect that a car like this with, with no issues, no glaring hurdles for the seller to overcome with his buying audience, uh, that this car could bring close to authentic market value. Like, in other words, PCAR market might not be the place to steal a car, but to buy a car. So what yeah. do you think? Yeah, I, I'm looking at like the interior of this car and it's got some updated carpets and stuff like that, which I I mean, I actually like what they did here. Let's see if I can get back to that picture. Yeah, this kind of houndstooth thing that they got going on in the back and on the front pads and stuff. But I'm looking at the seats. They're looking a little worn and it makes me wonder what the carpets looked like before. And I'm very right. curious to see how the Porsche enthusiast buyer will receive that are they going to be happier with something that's perfect and normal or something that's normal and a little worn or something that's been replaced with kind of, i mean i, I no. just something's slightly off to me on this thing um i i do it does, love it does have I, seventy thousand miles yeah. yeah i mean it's got seventy thousand. i mean i think this is a great car uh yeah. and i like I said, I don't have a problem with what they've done. I mean, I love that strut tower uh, brace right. that is it's a big looking. improvement yeah. on this car. Uh, the oh, other yeah. thing too, is if you're going to do stickers and let me tell you, I am one to talk about having too many stickers. I am a sticker dork. Uh, wait till you guys see <laughs> our see? Targa uh, that we're going to be released. But let me look, the it's, stickers. Is it a Targa JP or is it a carton of cigarettes? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is a, it is. It's a dumpster fire is what it is. Uh, look, uh, this, this right here is a problem to me. You got the chronograph Hauer, uh, you know, thing. Uh, yeah. And then you've got the Pegasus. It, I like both of these decals. Uh, one or the other, pal. One yeah. or the other. 
pick <laughs> one. You can't pair yeah. these two. The chronograph div- belongs over here. The little crest belongs under the mirror. Yeah, under uh, the mirror. Not, I was just going to yeah, say, they're too far forward. Here. Yeah. That's where Ferrari puts his emblem. He puts it on the quarter, not on the door, but the Porsche guys go mm. down the mirror. You missed yep. it. I, uh, I, I know because I did it wrong on my car. <laughs> mm. And if you're going to do the Pegasus, the Pegasus does kind of belong where the chronograph is, but the Pegasus isn't flat. You got to have it at kind of like an angle. It's got to look like it's flying, not running yeah, like take, you know like a plane taken off yeah yeah, be, yeah. so uh the professor uh ben the professor our good friend mm-hmm. uh he will get out there when he puts the pegasus on his cars that's the only sticker he really allows is the pegasus and he's out there with rulers <laughs> and gauges and measuring that it's the exact right <laughs> angle uh so this would wig him out he would have oh a God. seizure looking at this so will that yep. make any difference on what this car excels for i doubt it but uh i mean yeah. they peel right off but this is yeah. a beautiful car you know who's really good at that too uh rod emery puts uh like you know like flat black and flat gray pegasus on his like you know very industrial colored emery outlaws and mm-hmm. they always look really good it's like yeah. the single decal you'd, you'd almost think pegasus was the emery mascot when <laughs> in fact it's mobile oil but uh yeah. very very cool stuff i still like the effort here uh the car looks good clearly this is set up to drive um you know i would I buy this car? Probably, uh, but I'm really holding out for you know. I want my 993 to have sports seats, which are really rare. Uh, but that would make a that would make a difference to me. But this is a great car. C2s. I mean, you can't really go wrong. I, I think it looks great. Lowered. Look at that. Yep, it's kind of a perfect car. Where do you think it's going to land? Seventy thousand buck or seventy thousand miles. It's sitting at fifty forty five nine nine three right now with two hours to go. All right, so I set it up that you know. P car is getting market value for these cars, and I think this car should bring sixty-five thousand dollars to the market. But at forty-five, you're talking about you know, a, like that's fifty percent more money in the next two hours, and I am not feeling that number at all. So I'm gonna cool my jets here and say sixty grand. Sixty grand. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's basically what the car's worth. Is it worth a little bit more, or is it worth a little bit less? Does this car have a clean Carfax? Is it? Uh, yeah. Do you have any I think issues this car. There? I think this car is worth a little bit more. If you go under sixty, then you're talking cab money, and this is a two wheel drive coupe. This should bring the money. But, uh, I mean, my God, are they going to get 50% more money in the final two hours? I don't know. Like, I'm going big. Just... I'm going to say 62, uh, oh, you know, you and uh, see where this goes. Because, I, I mean, I really like this car. I know of one in particular, a white one that I've had my eye on, uh, that they're asking more than that for. So I'm very interested to see where this car lands. Uh, right. So, yeah. Okay. Very good. This is a great car. And uh, good luck, B-Car Market, and good luck to the seller. Yeah. All right. What's next? Well, staying with uh, Stuttgart, JP, let's go over to bring a trailer. And uh, we, how many stickers would you put on this thing? It's a 1971 Porsche 914 mm. 6 project. By all accounts, this is, you know, 90%, 95%. Uh, complete as far as all the parts are there, you just have to put them back together. Uh, but, um, you know, the motor is partially disassembled. So you're talking about an engine rebuild and then a full assembly plus the, uh, you know, acquiring the missing parts. You know, you're going to spend a lot of money on this. You know, the, the reality is, though, a, a restored 914.6 now is a six figure car all day long. And if it has fresh paint, uh, and an updated interior, you're talking 130 to 150 thousand dollars. But a nice complete 914 six is 85 to 100 grand. So at 19 thousand dollars, which is where this car is sitting there, you know, w- would somebody pay that to buy this car and then spend 75 thousand dollars to assemble it? Can you assemble this car and rebuild the motor and 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 for 75 thousand bucks? I don't know, man. Dwayne Wick could. But you and I, as laypersons that would have to hire a mechanic, might not be able to. So, you know, does this car pencil? I don't know. The interesting thing I want to point out, JP, um, with this lot that is offered to us out of Sierra Madre, California, mm. and has the certificate of authenticity, which allows you to verify that this is a matching numbers drivetrain, is that there are only and interestingly two bids on this car. So somebody bid. Nine thousand one hundred and forty-six dollars. Get it? Nine fourteen six. <laughs> and then somebody bid ten grand over, and I am going to wager that that was a knockout blow, and that 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 might be it. They might not get another bid on this car. 
Um, so anyway, there you go. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you, man. I don't see how this thing... I mean, okay, it's at Sierra Madre, so shout out to our good buddy. Uh, we were just talking about him. Shout out to Ben. You know, Ben, Mr. Yeah. Easenby's the professor, the man. Yeah. He runs the show over there, or at least a big the- part of it. Uh, 20 yeah. grand for this pile of crap. I mean, look, that body is not clean. It has rust area. All the usual right. rust There's areas different, need different to be grafted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the engine is going to be, I mean, you'd have to pay at least 20 something thousand dollars to rebuild that engine. Um, this right. is a, a basket case. If there ever was one, I mean, right. so, uh, the amount of work that this is uh yeah someone could have a really great car in the end but you know we we talk about this a lot are you better off doing a project on your own um or are you better off just getting one that's done let someone else eat all that now yeah you're absolutely right it it is you and i could not do this um it's just would not pencil out because we'd have to hire people this is for someone that has the time the shop the energy the the i mean but even then i mean it's like okay you have let's say you have the time and have the skills this is going to take a six months of your life Um, you know uh, if that's all you're doing well i mean look it's it's probably over the oh this is probably a project that would take a year but someone could do this in three four months if that's all they're doing um that's yeah and so what's your return on that? You spend 20 grand uh, or 25,000 bucks or whatever in six months of your time. I mean, how much do you make a month? This does not pencil out to me, to anyone that knows how to yeah. do this stuff. That doesn't yeah. seem like a good way to be spending your time because other people will pay you way more money to do it for their cars. Uh, oh. And yeah, I... I, I so that's a knockout punch. I'm with you. I don't think it's getting another bid. Uh, I do you have so a either. number on this? I, is this how well, do we I, how I, do we I, do a bid I, nerd thing when we when we both I, agree that uh, uh, yeah. it's not going to get it any more money? Yeah. Well, then we're we're agreeing to a draw. Um. I, okay. I'll say somebody wants it more. I'll give you the knockout punch. At <laughs> 19, give me the nineteen one four six. Nineteen four one four six. Okay. And then, uh, and then I'll just bet the over. Okay. Um, at uh, the, somebody bets a hundred dollars over that. Uh, so because if it does get another bid, I win. So yeah, it, it there is you go. Is. So I'll Fair just take a hundred dollars over and we'll go with that. So I'll give you my bid and take a hundred dollars over it. All right. Um, so I'll take that. I'll take that. 1,000, no, 19,246. And I have to put my initials next to it because I'm writing in your place. But anyway, all right, cool. All right, JP. Good luck, Ben. Let's run over. There's another Targa. It, listen, it says it's out of Sierra Madre, California, not at Sierra Madre, which is Oh, weird. I thought you meant uh, it was at yeah, Sierra I Madre. Okay. Yeah. So, Sorry, I've, Ben, if this has nothing to do with you. I, I have to confess, I didn't know Sierra Madre was a place. So I'm not sure yeah. where that is, but it's got to be some <laughs> sort of in, township. It's where Sierra Madre happens to be. I always, That's funny because every time yeah. I drive, the first time I drove by the exit to yeah. go to Sierra Madre, I'm like, they're on the exit side? And I realized, yeah. oh, that's where <laughs> it's like Costa Mesa or something like that. It's just a yeah. place. Yeah, okay. So uh, down all right. There. I Whatever. thought they had a much more clever name at Sierra Madre. I always thought they had some fancy meeting but it was just a town that their warehouse is in how lame is that, isn't that i know ben you're cool than that get him to change the name change it change it to the professor's <laughs> porsche junk ben's that so cool one. he doesn't even, ben's so cool he doesn't even have to go to sierra madre to work for sierra madre he's remote. true he's remote <laughs> all right uh let's get to the next car what do we got all right let's keep it with the target theme but let's do all it right. italian style jp mm. this is one of the coolest ferraris uh, we're looking at a 1999 355 GTS, which is their name for the Targa top. These came in coupe, Targa, and complete spiders. But this is, I mean, th- this is really evocative of the car that put Ferrari on the map in the United States when Tom Selleck drove one uh, in uh, Magnum PI. So this is an authentic Targa top that stows and you can drive around with it. Uh, what makes this car in particularly cool is that it's a manual transmission. And uh, you have to understand that the F1 gearbox had just come out, and a lot of these cars were being equipped with that. So as we go down the road, the single the single clutch F1 gearboxes are really soft in the secondary market, but the manuals are absurdly strong. So our example out of Great Neck, New York, is showing just 30,000 miles. That we must uh, we must bring it to your attention that there is a branded title exceeds the mechanical limits, which has to be some sort of flaw in the DMV because this has a six digit VIN. It's showing zero three zero comma blah 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 whatever is left. So I am of the mindset that that is just a uh, like a misprint and it, it's got this branded title, but it's 
that the mileage is authentic and that this is an honest car, um, which is really a shame because it probably with the if you think the finicky market with the Porsche guys, you should see how finicky the Ferrari guys are. JP, this is going to hurt the value on this car, which means some smart and sort of lucky guy is going to be able to pick this car up for less than the hundred and fifty thousand dollars I would predict it would bring if it didn't have this silly discrepancy on the title and the Carfax. So here we have this beautiful yellow car with um, fab speed headers, a two B exhaust system. Uh, probably needs a belt service. It was done in March of 2017, so uh, the timing belt probably needs to be done by the new owner so that you can go out and enjoy it. But this car absolutely rips. They're going up in value. You can drive it and still put some miles on it and not hurt the value of it because it's not a 3,000-mile car. I just think this thing is great. I even like the color, which is sort of silly. Um, the challenge grills on the back are beautiful. It's got four-piston Brembo brakes. This is this is like the first step from Ferrari's archaic side to their modern side. You know, the third 348 was like the, the transition car. This car, Ferrari got it all right. These are great drivers. Uh, it's, a, it's a bummer that they have the belt service. But other than that, being a little bit high maintenance, these are fantastic to drive. And they sound amazing. Red lines at 8,500 rpm my partner and this thing sounds like an f1 car when you get there what do you think yeah man these are so awesome tom Selleck may never have actually driven one of these on uh on the tv show but uh sean connery drove one in the rock no it wasn't sean connery it oh, was, it was uh, uh nicholas cage. cage he yep. and that's maybe that's probably why the miles are all messed up on it it's because it's probably that exact car that was in the oh, movie man. that they smashed through windshields and yep. and glass doors and jumped it and all that kind of stuff yeah um, they had like they had like three of them on set they were filming near our restaurant <laughs> on Knob hill yeah and uh, uh, and they had there when I remember driving by the set and I saw like three of these things, two of them were real. And one of them was clearly like a fiberglass bodied Fiero that they were going to <laughs> That's awesome. smash. Yeah. It was really funny. But uh, yeah, Nicholas Cage owned one of these cars at one Did point he? too. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. He's a big Ferrari guy. I remember the first time I drove one of these, uh, I was at first, I was like, what the hell? Like uh, when I was leaving the dealership to get to the freeway, you know, oh, and yeah. I was driving it like a normal car. And then if you know, you're right. When you get in those upper RPMs, it sounds like you, oh. you're on the F1 track. Oh. Uh, yep. when you're just driving around in traffic, the thing, it, it feels you're like, is this, it, did I break it? I broke it. Yeah. I had to have broken this thing. What's going on? Yeah. It just sounds horrible. It lugs, it, uh, it shakes, it rattles. It's yeah. like awful. But then you put your foot in it and it's like, oh my God, what um, is that noise? That yeah, is the greatest noise I've ever heard. It's so good. It's oh my God, so they're so good. much fun. They're, they're really great cars. And and it's interesting because we've been, we've been you know, kind of um, commenting and noticing how uh, F430s, which are the last uh, Ferrari mid-inch V8s that were offered with manual transmissions, the prices for those are going nuts now. They're bringing mm -hmm. more money than the limited quantity, limited production uh, Scuderias, uh, which are totally track-focused cars. So it's lifting the values of the cars behind it. 360s are bringing a premium with a manual, and certainly here, uh, 355s are as well. We've seen a couple bring, you know, like seriously good money. Um, but this car, it's a, JP, it's just at 86,000 with about four hours to go. Um, it's only had 14 bids. I, I'm telling you, John, this should be a $130,000 car or more um, with those files in that condition, with that roof, <clears throat> and they're not. So it's th this branded title hold is going to hold that it back. Guy, can that guy in the passenger side see be any more Long Island? Look at this guy. Oh my God. I know. Seriously. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. It's a P car market car. What's going on? Oh, uh, dude. oh dude. Don't, don't sit there and just look like, it, uh, it's, it's so bad. Looks like he's going to go beat his girlfriend. All right. So this car, uh, <laughs> I, I, Oh man, I, I'm with you on the prices of these because it's a manual. It's not that horrible F1 transmission. Um, but I can't say it enough. This is a car that if you think you're going to buy it and drive it because you're going to get a deal on it, uh, you know, it's going to be, be prepared for the maintenance. There is right. owning one of these is, Whew. It's, it a is it is a it's a committed relationship committed relationship you are <laughs> get ready to pay when i test drove that same car i was talking about i stopped in a parking lot just for a minute right and the parking lot was slightly tilted it wasn't level and yeah. i went to drive away i went to drive away and i went I put it in ge first gear and just, you know, parking lot speed. I wasn't like, oh, take it up. There's cars everywhere, minivans and everything. As I drove forward, all of a sudden, the car literally started this 
to spin like a yeah. hundred eighty degree spin. Like I was going <laughs> one hundred eighty miles an hour and hit the hit the parking brake. It just it just started spinning. I'm like going, what is like? I was in this slow motion hundred eighty degree uh, twirl <laughs> in this hundred thousand dollar car at the time, and I and you know I mean I was evacuating my bowels, going, what the hell is going on? Why my brain can't handle what is happening? Because I had no idea why it was doing that. There it, there was no physical way for that to happen. It turned so once the car finally stopped, and I was like, okay, I didn't hit anything good. Yeah. Uh, got out of the car, inspected the car. When I was sitting there, um, the the overflow on the radiator, the tube goes and drips. Yeah fluid right in front of the left rear wheel so the little puddle on the ground yeah, was this you. slimy gooey little uh <laughs> pool of coolant so as i went forward oh, i drove through it yeah. and it just i drove through this puddle of slime and it made my car spin at five miles an yeah. hour i was like i took yeah. it back i'm like i no, this is way out of my league i can't handle uh oh, ferrari is so not funny. happening for me that's like that's like, yeah, it's like trying to drive a dish soap, man. That's just not going to happen. Right. It was just, yeah. I mean, but yeah. So anyways, uh, I want one of these so bad. I think, honestly, I think it's one of the best looking Ferraris of all time. I know I've kind of said that about the 348, and I do prefer the 348s just because they're a little bit more kitschy and they're more me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the I think the Ferrari 348 is like the coolest looking one, and yep. I think the 355 is the best looking one. There it is. So, so it's an interesting thing, JP. When they came out with the 348, they had changed or updated the platform from the previous 328. Um, yeah. And so when the 355 came, this car is essentially an evolution of the 348. They're built yeah. on the same platform. Uh, so parts like suspension, are, are largely interchangeable um, i've seen people and, lego the whole uh, body yeah, kit around it and it looks yeah like absolutely yeah it's totally it's very interesting how these cars are uh are closely related obviously this motor is punched out a little bit bigger and got mm-hmm. a lot more horsepower you know where the 348 makes 300 horsepower this car is making 375 almost 400 horsepower and wow. it just screams yeah. and then they did the same thing the 360 and the f430 uh, those are the same two cars, uh, again, built on an evolution of one of the other, the predecessor's platform. So yeah. anyways, JP, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I think this car is going to make a hundred thousand mm. uh, dollars, but, but not the one twenty one thirty that, that yeah. it should. Um, so the question is, is it going to just get to a hundred grand or is it going to get up to 110 and stall out? I just think bring a trailer's too big a platform to bet against. And so mm. I'm going to say $110,000, but I believe in my heart that this car should bring 25, 30 grand more. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. The, the brand is going to, I mean, the brand is the brand. People are just so stupid about branded titles. I suspect yeah. your take on what is going on is correct. I hope that's fixable. And maybe whoever's looking at purchasing this car is going, you know what, we're going to go ahead and, you know, on a six figure car, it, it makes sense to go through the time and effort to go ahead and get that taken care of. Uh, in which case uh, that would really raise the value. But I think uh, BAT people are going to get scared of it. And I think it's going to, th- I think it's going to stumble at a hundred. So I'm going to say, 100. okay. All right. That's, and that's a, and it's a fair take. And mm-hmm. one of us is going to be right yeah. and we'll see what happens. All right, JP last car. And I, if you don't know this already, <laughs> I picked this for you. I'm like, oh. this thing is, it reminds me a little bit about your dad's car. It's just, this is like just one of those honest, like just totally reliable, like <sighs> just do everything punches way above its weight. You can park it anywhere. You could probably pour sand in the gas tank and, and and thump it on home fuel tank uh, it's a diesel right yeah yeah, yeah. fuel <laughs> tank sorry thank you sir for the correction uh, this is a no reserve 1982 volkswagen rabbit pickup diesel five speed just listen how you've trained me jp just mm-hmm. 141,000 miles shown <laughs> out of salem oregon uh is that where the witches are from jp is that the mm, right coast for witches yeah wrong, okay, wrong cool. portland yeah so anyways uh um I, I have to say, as much as I love things that are like period correct, I am not feeling that wood grain on the dashboard. If there was just anything there but that like simulated authentic wood grain paneling, I'd be more in love with this thing. Uh, but I love the bucket seats and the manual transmission. Diesel means it'll go anywhere. Um, I, I'm waiting for you to tell me, JP, that this car is just broken in and will go for another three or 800,000 miles. Uh, what do you think of this thing in copper? Is that just rad or what? <laughs> 
You got to love this truck. It looks like it's oh. had a lot done to it. I'm trying to get to the darn uh, interior pics, guys. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I mean, look, uh, my buddy Zach, we talk about my buddy Zach up in the Northwest all the time. Get he him has on one the of show. these. Uh, we got to get him on here. He oh, has yeah. one that he put like a modern uh, TDI engine in. It is right. so awesome. I mean, it's so yeah. good. Um, he built it for his kid that's just like an ungrateful little puke because he didn't want oh. it. Um, yeah, he, I don't know. Imagine I put a GTI steering wheel, GTI golf ball shifter, GTI alloy wheels, and then, you know, whatever accoutrement you could do, like a, a the red. Recaro ring, seats, a, the Recaro seats, oh, the, the, the Valor. Seats, yeah. yeah, that's, that's yeah, what he did the, is. And, the, and then the red ring around the dash, the, the yeah. grill to make it look like a GTI. Because it, it, JP, from the B pillar forward, yeah. it's a GTI. It's, it's, rabbit, it's just yeah. it's not a hatchback. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, this is the first car I ever wrecked, um, and it, I oh, didn't really? actually wreck it. Yeah, uh, my buddy, uh, I didn't have a license yet, and neither did my buddy, but his parents had one of these, and his parents would let him take the truck, uh, and we would go practice in it on the logging roads near our house back in the <laughs> back in the eighties when nobody cared yeah. if you did that sort of thing. Yeah, so we would right. just we would it would it would took us a, it, we had to drive about a mile and a half to a logging road from our house. Um, yeah. So as long as we didn't get caught in that mile and a half, we were pretty much okay yeah, yeah and course. pretty and the, the the only local cop that was in town he knew who we were and he saw us all the time yeah. he didn't give a shit he's like yeah they're learning to drive how else are they going to learn to drive but drive right. illegally on on the road and on a dirt road uh so we yeah. would take this thing out in the back roads and and learn to drift and slide around and learn what understeer and oversteer was without ha- knowing what any of those terms were uh right. we just knew it was like oh in this car if you go into the corner and you turn it it wants to go straight but in the other cars it wants to fishtail and we would try to figure out why that was and we finally figured out oh because front wheel drivers rear wheel drive um yeah. but uh yeah my buddy jim he was driving we went around the corner and uh he forgot that this one um understeers and uh instead of oversteers plowed. and in the ditch we went as we plowed in oh, there uh, his folks were Brutal. not happy with him um how, how bad did they hurt the car did they like total it no he didn't totally just bent up the fenders and stuff like that i mean it was fine i mean these things are bulletproof uh, you yeah. know you could throw them into a ditch no problem it just takes a little repair but the thing was that they actually did send a stater out there and he got in trouble uh he oh. wound up not being able to get his license for a full extra he had to wait a full extra year <laughs> oh. uh, i think i got my license before he did and he was like two years older than me it was like oh my goodness that's brutal jim Poor bittner guy. not a brilliant guy he went on to his parents he was one of those guys where his parents bought him everything uh they couldn't get him out of that deal so as soon as he got his license he got a bitch in Camaro, 1984 Camaro, in the same oh. colors. This was copper color, and yeah. uh, it was just a regular six-cylinder manual one. He yeah. liked a set of wheels that the local dealership had. So when he brought the car in, he saw yeah. those wheels sitting at the dealership behind the dealership. Later, he decided he'd just help himself to them because uh, he figured out that out, and uh, he put those wheels on his Camaro. And then his Camaro needed the service because it was a new car. So he <laughs> brought his Camaro with the stolen wheels on it. Back to the dealership to be serviced. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. 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 I mean, you really, you really have to, you really have to work to be that good at being that bad. <laughs> he was not the, yeah, not the brightest bulb in the bunch. Uh, look, he, uh, wow. there it is, kids. Don't uh, do drugs. Uh, all right. So where is this, <laughs> where is this pickup going to land? I love this thing. Uh, it's in, looks like it's in pretty darn good shape. Has a little Decent bit of wear shape. here and there, but I mean, Decent you could shape. really do Man. some fun stuff with this. It's the oh, LX. Maybe. So it's a fancy version. I just, it'd be so cool to make that a drive front. Yeah. I yeah. Love it. So it's at $7,800. does have four hours to go. Um, uh, Salem, we're in Salem, bro, in Oregon, though, but not not the East Coast. Mm. And then, uh, it's sitting at let me just tell you, scroll, 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 a lot of pictures. Thank you. 16 bids. Mm. So, there is some action. And you know, again, you and I talk about this all the time. Where else are you to find Volkswagens from this era? I love that these odd VWs from this generation, the 80, all of the 80s and the early 90s, um, I think was, 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 am I wrong in pretending that that was like a golden age for Volkswagen in this country where they made really cool enthusiast cars by and large um, and they don't today? What's up, B-Dub? Come on, man. We yeah. used to love you. Uh, so I I think this car's got a chance. It, I put 9,000 bucks, but I telling you i wouldn't be surprised if it makes 10 
Um, I think it, you know it's going to get up close to my bid, and and it'll take a lot of bids to get there. I just feel like the crowd for this is going to bid in minimum increments, like a hundred dollar increments. There's not mm-hmm. going to people aren't going to be throwing five hundred dollar haymakers at this car, yeah. uh, so it can get twenty more bids and still be at like eighty seven hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see. But I think nine grand is realistic, and I wouldn't be surprised if it broke ten. So there you go. So what's your bid? Nine thousand. And where's it at now? 7400 let me read it to you again cuz I might have been reading it $7800 on $7800 yeah I'm going to yes. go I'm going to bet just a slightly over I'm going to say 95 good guess yeah, I don't know if this thing breaks 10. I mean, like we always say, the Volkswagen buyers, you're absolutely right about these little incremental buys. Yeah. And they just, even though this is a very nostalgic car to a lot of people, the people that's nostalgic to may not have the money to buy it. Uh, yeah. As I mean, look, uh, my Volkswagen um, assessment in general just went down the tubes the other day when that Corrado failed to bring $15,000. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, that's so, so weird. the perfect Corrado... Uh, uh, versus this truck, I mean, and this thing could conceivably bring two thirds of the, the Corrado. That doesn't make any sense in any rational world. So um, right. we'll see where this and, thing and goes. Yeah, the VW community is really strange. If if bring a trailer allowed five dollar bid increments, this this truck would yeah. take twelve hours to close. Yeah, okay. this is this is penny <laughs> slots all day long right here, man. Oh my god! Um, yeah, but should be, but could be a really really cool truck. Um, what a great oh, pit I, truck! Yeah. You know, uh, oh, if you have man. like, could you imagine? Roll, so, yeah, yeah. I want to put stickers all over it. And, like, I know. Take the that that uh that decorative line across the the whole belt line of the car i would remove mm-hmm. that and put some alloy wheels on it and it'd be so much fun imagine teardrops on that thing how cool oh heck yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we want this truck all right well there it is guys that's another edition of bid nerds your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer and all the other <laughs> automotive enthusiast auction sites oh wait is there another <laughs> car huh? no am i forgetting yes, is there forgot. really we oh forgot. never mind it's- we forgot it's a honda element we uh, do we have we to talk started, about the honda element we don't we can run through it like we can do record uh, all right record let's do this really quick record. guys I only because this, this was car. a this was an audience submission that's but we true started, all right we started on p car market and worked our way left to right and this car we forgot on cars and bids. i forgot about the so one on cars it's a and 2004 bids. honda element ex all-wheel <laughs> drive this car does have two hundred and eight thousand miles on it it's a no reserve auction offered to us out of martinez california California by a uh, friend of the bid nerds and viewer, the photographer's garage. Uh, do you know his name, JP? Um, no, okay, the top sorry. Of my I don't. Sorry. Okay, sorry about so that. Uh, right. We do need to but give he, him a shout out, his, but I'm spacing he's out. A friend, his handle is the photographer's garage, friend and viewer of the bid nerds. Jeff. And he asked us to review this car. Um, you know, uh, friend of the bid nerds, Frank Collins, who uh, was a Porsche technician, really, really great Porsche tech. And uh, you and I worked with him at Godden. Um, he has a Honda Element, and now he's doing keys, and his Honda Element is his key business. That's his mobile truck. He set mm. up the whole back of this thing. But he said, Michael, buy, get rid of that Audi and buy Esther an Element. You'll be shocked. She'll love it for the dogs. Great utility, great power, great um, fuel economy. He, he couldn't say enough nice things. So with a 2.4 liter inline four, all-wheel drive, and a manual transmission in actually attractive Galapagos green this 200,000 mile honda probably still has a lot of life left in it because two people we know said they're great so anyways here's this car offered with three hours to go on seven bids it's sitting at forty eight hundred dollars again jp this is a no reserve auction um does the roof rack treatment on this turn it into <laughs> an all an overland vehicle for you or is that just a basket <laughs> you know so Back in 2002, 2003, I bought a brand new Land Rover Discovery. Um, yeah. I believe these had just come out uh, or they right. came out like right after yeah. this. And I remember yeah. looking at one of these after the fact and, and you know, and I even drove one because we had a Honda dealership as a client and, and yeah. we were making commercials for them. I remember driving around, one around going, God, this thing's kind of tinny and boxy and <laughs> it drives fine, but it's certainly not luxurious like my Land Rover. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. my God, the utility factor was so great. And I kind of lamented that I didn't just get one of these and save some money. Um, right. And the fact is, I probably still have it today if I had bought uh, the Honda because oh, they just go and go and go and go and go. Whereas my well, Land Rover, I got rid of the second the warranty was up. Um you- 
you as a producer professionally have all yeah. these great bags for all your gear. And, yeah. and to me, Honda made a bag for all your gear with a motor in it. I mean, it's like, like all your stuff would fit yep. so perfectly in the back of this. Uh, but yeah, I can't really tell you how many uh, PAs and associate producers that I know and yeah. grips have these. Yeah. They are because yeah. of just that. And uh, right. Erica up in uh, the Northwest, uh, shout out to, she had the same color and everything. And like when I first oh, saw yeah. it, I'm like, oh my God, is that her car? She had, it was full of so much I mean, it was a mini micro grip truck. I mean, what uh, you totally. need a blue gel? Yeah, we got one. You need a Fresnel? Yeah, what do you, you got? Some I mean, yeah. whatever she needed, C stands, everything was all inside of this stupid thing, and she just yeah. rocked it everywhere. Um, Two hundred thousand miles. Uh, you're right. Uh, this thing probably has another hundred fifty thousand miles to go. But that's yeah, I would think that's going to affect the value, though. I mean, anytime yeah. you hit that two hundred number, people start to. Yeah, so where's this thing going to land? I don't think it's going to land much higher than where it's at right now. Hate to say, yeah. It. That's- 4800 on seven bids, um, JPI $5,500 because of the miles. But it, by all accounts, uh, our, our buddy took good photos of the car and shows really well. It looks very clean. It doesn't even look like it has 100,000 miles on it. So it looks like it's been kept up, and it'll help it. Uh, and it's no reserve, which you you have always uh, <clears throat> advocated that if you if you can, that really keeps people engaged because people know it's going to sell, and that that's a great a great selling tool if you have the courage to exercise it. And that's what we have here. This car is going to sell fifty five hundred JP. What do you say? Yeah, it's tough because I mean there hasn't been any bids on this in like six days until just a little bit ago at a hundred dollars. Right. So will that spark a late rally, or is that just someone that's going? Oh, hey, I can get this fairly cheap and no one else is probably pay, paying attention because I kind of doubt the guy that bid on it six days ago is still here. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it makes... I'm going to bet the under and say 52. Yeah. I just don't think this thing with right. 200,000 miles is going to go anywhere. Uh, great truck, though. I mean, whoever gets it is getting a really well-kept, really nice condition, high mileage, but perfect utility vehicle that you can just... Manual. Yeah, with a manual and not worry about... I mean, what a great camping rig... I, yeah, I mean, I'd love to own this thing. I would love to have this yeah. here and just not care about it. This is the kind of car that you're like, oh yeah, I have an element. Where did I put yeah. that? You know, let's go use it for something. I, you know, because you're yeah. never going to really think about it. It's just going to be yeah. a car that's there. It's a, it. It's on the floor in the bottom of the closet in front hall behind your old tennis shoes and still have mud on them because you haven't right. gotten around to rinsing them off. Yeah. And when I go to drive it, I'll be like, oh, my wife is driving it because uh, she didn't want to drive one of the Porsches and rather drive that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you and I are the type of idiots that would go out and buy that. Um, Volkswagen rabbit pickup truck for twice as much money when the element would serve us so much better. <laughs> That's true. It's true. All right, guys. Well, there it is. Is now is now is it the end of the show? Geez, the host doesn't even Fine. want to be here. Uh, thank you We're guys so much. Subscribe, here? like, hit all the, you know, share buttons and all that stuff, notifications. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We do this every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Uh, this weekend, last Sunday of the month is Cars and Cafe in downtown Las Vegas in the Arts District. So come and check us out there and you can say hello in person if you like otherwise yeah. happy bidding yeah. and we will see you guys tomorrow yeah cars and cafe come out meet the bid nerds bid nerds <laughs> yeah. you can yourself get yeah. those nerds, you- nerds!